Hey guys, uh, got a different kind of video this time um, for the tarpon people out there. Uh, we have a once a year type activity in regards to the tarpon, uh, the Pololo worm hatch. Now I'm sure not a lot of people know about it unless you're a Keys aficionado and particularly the tarpons, but basically what it is is um, end of May, uh, beginning of June, full moon, um, evening, nighttime, outgoing tide, uh, the Pololo worms basically hatch or they basically start migrating out from the, the coral rocks where they usually live and they basically jump on the outgoing tide and they just take the tide out and head out towards the reef. And uh, that coincides with the tarpon migration where they're coming up from the south and then they're moving along the Atlantic up to the Miami and the mainland. So it just happens at the same time that uh, those worms are going out, the tarpon are coming in, and for whatever reason, the tarpon have an alarm clock, they can smell it, they can sense it, they do their whatever, but they know that it's happening and they, they bombard the uh, channels from the lower keys all up the middle keys. And uh, what you have is 100, 150 pound tarpon slurping up these little one inch uh, plolo worms. They look like little red worms basically all they are one inch long and they'll just gobble them up and that's that's all they do. Um, makes uh, an awesome experience but also a very frustrating fishing experience because they won't hit anything else. They'll just turn off except for those little worms in which they'll just go god awful crazy over it. Okay, so me knowing that was going to happen, um, I kind of had this little kit that I had made, which is basically these uh, little robo worms that I bought, brought with me from California. And what they are is just little, um, little swim, little plastic baits, basically. Um, I used them for crappie and bluegills and uh, little small bass and so forth, and to put them on a drop shot. Uh, but they're the perfect size. Maybe they're a little bit, they're probably twice the size of the Pololo worms. But sometimes when you have a thousand of the same thing, something a little bit larger to stand out might make it work. Uh, plus I needed something a little bit larger to get out there to them. So um, this I thought would have been perfect. So for the last couple of weeks, I stashed this with my uh, little hook kit in my uh, tarpon box. And I've been just taking it out with it, knowing that sometime that was going to happen. Um, it's also a good reason, portion of the reason why I bought the fly fishing gear was for this hatch. Um, I, I, I caught it last year and it was under the perfect circumstances. Um, it was early evening so the sun was still out so I could see everything and it was flat calm. I remember that. It was like a lake out there and um, I was throwing a big Hobie swim bait out there for the tarpon but not having any luck. But then all of a sudden on that outgoing cod, it just went crazy. There were just hundreds of tarpon just out there rolling and you can see their fins and tails out because they're sitting on the surface and they're just gulping up all these things. I couldn't figure it out. I mean, they were just coming within five, 10 feet of the, the, the kayak and I was just like, I couldn't get in the bite. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, but eventually I started noticing because of the clarity is these little worms just darting by all over the place. And it kind of put it into perspective of what was going on. And uh, they're just a little tiny worm. They're kind of a reddish, brownish color, depending on the sun. And then um, they, they propel themselves by corkscrewing. Um, it looks like they have a little bit of feet or a little bit of hairs, like a centipede or a millipede. But they just twist. I was looking at them. They just twist really quickly and they can dart like maybe a yard, maybe a little bit longer, they could jet real quick in those little um, sections there. And uh, it was pretty neat. And then I, I noticed that that's what those tarpon were hitting. So I checked on it and that's what it was to blow the worm hatch. So this year I wanted to prepare it. So I got all that stuff ready for it and headed out there. Unfortunately this year, um, I went there for three days. Finally that third night, um, it, it kicked in. Unfortunately what it was, it's, it was blowing about 10 knots. Um, not too bad, but it, it chops up the water where it's exposed coming from the east. Um, gets the water a little bit milky too. And uh, 
There was also uh, this big, huge funnel cloud going right over Key West, which blocked out the sun. So it was it was going from the, the skyline all the way above me, and it just blocked out, so it made it look like it was darker earlier than it was. So I really cut down on the, the, the visibility. Um, but I was fishing during the early evenings. I got a few bites and whatnot, but then all of a sudden they I started seeing them rolling a lot more than usual. Um, not as many as last year, but they there were more than what it had been. So I knew it was kind of suspicious that, okay, this must be it, this has to be it. But be, not being able to see the worms in the water because of the chop and the color, um, I wasn't totally sure. But then the thing that really made me positive about it was all the birds started showing up as well. Um, all the little terns and small birds, not the pelicans getting the uh, pilchards, but the smaller birds, and they're coming down, dipping at stuff along the water, and then the, the tarpon rolling, and me casting at them and not getting a bite. So I knew it wasn't, uh, I knew it was the uh, Palola worm hatch was happening. Um, there was six boats out there as well, waiting for it. Everybody was doing their thing, but nobody caught anything. It's just, they're so focused on just that particular little meal that they disregard anything that's not that. So it's kind of frustrating, but still interesting to watch. Um, they had boats that were just driving up and down the channel, just watching all the tarpon rolling and so forth. Um, but probably lasted 45 minutes. And then that cloud that was overhead opened up and it started raining a little bit. Not real heavy, but just raining a little bit. And that just shut it down. I mean, all of a sudden they just disappeared. I don't know what, where they went, if they just went down or they went back out to deeper water, but it just turned them off and then that was basically it. Um, I stayed there until after dark, expecting something to happen maybe, but nothing. So it was just over that quick. I don't know if there was another one. Unfortunately, the following day, it went up to 15 to 20 plus knots and it was just not a chance I was gonna go out there in that wind. So. I postponed it and then uh, so that might have been it but anyways it's just a real interesting to, to know about um, the video doesn't really show much of what happened um, there's tons of them rolling but with the GoPro the things in a distance don't really come out I mean if you enlarge it in full screen you could probably see the the tails and the fins out rolling a lot but um, other than that it's just more of a reminder um, end of May beginning of June, okay, uh, track the full moon. So you want the full moon, a uh, little before, a little bit after, just right around that time frame. And then you want an outgoing tide um, in the evening time or the night time. And I guess that's kind of the, the flag that you'll know that's kind of the time frame, the window to look for. So anyways, that's the Palolo Worm Hatch. Uh, check out the videos. Uh, you can kind of take a look at my uh, little gears that I had um, one of the uh, fly uh, guides gave me this when I was out there just to use for in general which was very nice to film um, and of course that's a little swim bait there the little robo worm pack that I had I was using some number little number ones on it so this was my basic setup and then I'd super glued them so I was using it on my fly rod as well as casting with it and then um, a little tip you if you have the gulp shrimp what you can do is you just get the gulp shrimp and then uh, just cut the tail off and then you'll you can see that that's just basically a worm there and uh, that was usable as too especially because you can use the lead head to cast but anyways that is it check out the video talk to you later bye